We are here for another Ask Dina session, and we are providing some education on esophageal cancer. Uh, April is esophageal cancer month, and we b really believe in providing some education to diagnose and recognize signs and symptoms and get that information out to you. So, Dina, uh, April is esophageal cancer, like I said. Heartburn is a cause of that. Um, so when is heartburn not just heartburn anymore? Heartburn can be a more serious condition when it's accompanied with other symptoms. If you have occasional heartburn, uh, that's probably not a big deal. But if you have heartburn more than a few times a week, or it's accompanied by other symptoms such as chronic cough that you can't explain, certainly unintended weight loss, chest pain, uh, vomiting or spitting up blood or recurrent vomiting even without blood, those are alarm symptoms and those should cause somebody to seek attention from a digestive health disease specialist. Okay, and I know I hear people complain of heartburn all the time. What are some causes? I know we've talked about this before, but remind the, our audience what are some causes? Well, causes are the same for a lot of different types of cancer, but uh, obesity, poor diet, lack of fiber, lack of fruits and vegetables, tobacco in any form, especially smoking and alcohol, are two of the biggest contributing factors to esophageal cancer. Um, but other factors, um, such as chronic heartburn and reflux that's not treated um, or diagnosed can be a big cause of it as well. Okay, and I know here at King's Daughters, uh, we know how important it is to catch cancer early, and esophageal cancer can be treated um, if diagnosed early. So what are some treatments that we have here available to uh, those that may be diagnosed with esophageal cancer? Well, we have a lot of treatments available, but it's, it's important to know that esophageal cancer is very insidious. It can sneak up on people and they don't have symptoms until it's later stage. So treatments that we have available, it might be something as simple as having an upper endoscopy or an upper scope, what we call an EGD, uh, where the doctor takes a lighted scope and looks down into the esophagus, stomach, and upper small intestine. That way he can see if there's any changes in the mucosa lining of the esophagus, take biopsies or brushings, uh, to see if there's anything unusual. Um, once he's done that, if he sees evidence of damage to the esophagus, they may do reflux or pH testing, which is something we do here quite a lot. Uh, and then another test called esophageal manometry, which tells us how the esophagus is functioning um, so that we can see if there's something that's not working correctly. Does it require medication or surgical intervention? Um, and then once a patient has gotten to the point where they have Barrett's esophagus, which is a precancerous condition, uh, and Barrett's, if left untreated, will turn into esophageal cancer, we have RFA, or radiofrequency ablation treatment, which is over 98% successful in eradicating those precancer cells. Okay, so we've got a lot of treatment options yes. here and, and great physicians in our digestive health clinic and Absolutely. gastro mm -hmm. clinic. Um, and we've also started a walk-in clinic for heartburn on Mondays, every Monday, yep. 1 to 4, mm -hmm. in the gastro office in Medical Plaza B. No appointment floor. necessary. Yeah, you can just walk in and see uh, the nurse practitioner or the PA that works over in the gastro office. They're both excellent, uh, and it's a great way to get people to come in when maybe normally they wouldn't schedule an appointment. Okay. Well, thank you, Dina, for your time, and thank that you. concludes our session this month on esophageal cancer.